do a little different type of service this morning, so just just pray. Good to have uh, Sid and Miss Debbie with us. Good praying for the Queen family. I don't the world Miss uh, Lois and Brother Robert. So uh, as I say, the family up there from from the side, see a lot of resemblance there. So uh, keep praying for them. Uh, Sister Sheila asked us to pray for Kathy Mann. She has COVID and on the ventilator, so never heard of her. Several more uh, church family that has COVID. Just keep praying for them. Uh, I was talking last week about doing a little quiz when you go out about what her Sam preaches on. But uh, yesterday I, I, I was busy all day, but I got to catch a few glimpses of uh, some of the memorial to 9 11. Anybody remember what he preached on the Sunday before 9-11 in 2001? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> no problem. He preached on Jesus. Morning or night? Anyway, I was thinking about it as, as I was playing the hay and I thought about it several times. But uh, as we, it, let me invite you to Sunday school, first off, because next week we'll be in 2 Timothy chapter 3. And verse 1, anybody know what it is off the top of your heart? Know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Yeah. After right one, you preached it right before 9-11. <coughs> but uh, remember, as, as yesterday, uh, I, I said a little bit of, it's called the, the lost phone calls of 9-11. And uh, there was one company up there, they had microphones all over and it recorded everything that was uh, said, and they found some of those people and, and played the uh, telephone conversation between them and their wife or others. And uh, it still affects people today. It's like a death, it's like a divorce. There's a lot of things uh, that affect people, and it don't just go away instantly. So we all pray, uh, you know, for people that uh, things like this touch. It's just. Uh, I, I, I seen it this week, and I never forgot what it was, but uh, it's, it, it, it was kind of like, uh, we don't know what today holds, okay? but we know who holds today, okay? So uh, I wanted to change the service up just a little bit and, and do kind of a patriotic service and uh, uh, let God get the glory for it because we know the United States is uh, founded on religious liberty of all things. Uh, of all the freedoms we have, it's a, it's a freedom to worship God. That's what we come here to do this morning, and I hope that's what's on your heart. But, uh, uh, it's just great to be an American, and our country is a great country. God has blessed it, and it's uh, like 9-11. Uh, it was enemies that was invading, but it seems like uh, the ones that hate it now are some of the leaders that are trying to destroy it. So we need to pray for our leadership and uh, pray for our community, our country, our church. A lot to pray for. So uh, let's just start off this morning in prayer and uh, we'll go from there. Okay? So everybody, bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we know that another day of life, it comes from you, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you for each and every precious breath you give us, Lord. The raising of our eyelids this morning, we know it comes from you. We just pray as we go into this service that you're blessed. Lord, we thank you for the country that we're born in. We pray that you'll uh, just touch there, Lord, and uh, may your will be done in it. We thank you for each and every one that comes this way. Lord, we know as we go about our ways, Lord, there's a lot of division. But uh, most of all, if there's one that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, Lord, the greatest choice that they can make is to come and accept him, Lord, into their life. Uh, I think about the vaccination, Lord. It's just the blood of Christ that vaccinates us, Lord, for eternity, and we're thankful for that. We pray that you'll uh, just bless in this song service. Bless Brother Sam and bring some message, Lord. We'll be thankful to praise you and honor you. Always be thankful. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The pastor's got it up there. You'll put it on the front. If you don't come to Wednesday night service, I thought about. How many people don't know the pledge to the Bible, to the Christian flag? So everybody stand up this morning, right over here. We know pledge allegiance to the, all these young people's done getting their hand on the heart. They know what to do. It, it, 
it's things like this ought to be taught, you know, not just to us older folks, but young kids nowadays. So uh, uh, let's say the pledge of allegiance to uh, America. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, here's the Christian flag.
he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide it trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our god sing with me how great is our god and all will see how great how great
they haven't been loaded the bathroom and they kept going in but they ain't coming out. I don't know if there's another exit door in there or not. <coughs> but uh, uh, continue to remember the sticking the prayers and they uh, try to take care of her. Maybe we'll find out something in a moment too, okay? Uh, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and we'll start our second Timothy chapter 3. We're just again here. We'll probably end up spending most of our time in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And uh, I'll take a bunch of prayer uh, for the nation this morning. Uh, thank you for God's blessings. I think about 9-11 and, and uh, I think about the fact never heard them talk about it very much, but I always thought that, that there had to be some connection that they picked that day that coincides with our emergency number. Okay? Right. Now, whether your phone goes or not, mine actually has 9-11. Okay? <laughs> I know for a long time, I said, oh, tell folks dial 9-11. It's not on the phone. It is on mine. There's a 99 on there. 88. <laughs> so, but I often thought it had to be, there had to be some significance that the terrorists decided to uh, use that date uh, to do that terrible, terrible thing that they did, and the fact of uh, what happened. Now, uh, I, I couldn't have told you, Keith had written it down, I couldn't tell you what I preached on this Sunday before 9 11. Now, I guess Bob Keith took over Harold Skates' job. Now, Bill Harold was deep here for many years, and I'd preach, he'd say, on the way out, he'd say, Now, Brother Sam, he preached. That, that on that using that text back in such and such a day on Sunday night or Sunday morning and and he'd always let me know if I, if I was going around a second time right or a third time or a fourth time all right but we're thankful for his goodness and mercy and, and of course it is a sad time to think about the many many lives that were lost and not only that the many lives that were lost after that where in the wars that seemingly uh that never, never have an end to the conflict. And so we just want to continue to pray for our country. Okay. Now, in the second, uh, in Second Timothy chapter 3, there's a verse here, verse 7, and, and it makes, it says something here to us to get us started. It says, Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And then we just jump one chapter over in chapter 4 of, of 2 Timothy. And verse 3 reads, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Verse 4 says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto faith. So what we've already established, the Scripture says that they're ever learning, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And they will get to the place where they will turn their ears away from the truth. Uh, I, I, I don't do disclaimers, but I say this quite often. Uh, I am not against education. I'm all for education. But I do realize that in our uh, schools of higher learning and even, even down to our elementary schools, there has been uh, teachings of propaganda against God that have been taught and have been embedded in the minds and the young hearts of individuals. And just because someone has gotten old enough to go to college, that don't mean they're still not a child. Okay? They're still learning. They should always be willing to learn. But those are years when, when they're being molded into an individual. Just like he said, Lord, do, do this. When I went to school, you done that. I thought it was a law. I, I, really, I, I thought that if you went to school, you got upset to pledge allegiance to the American flag. I thought it was a law. Okay? I didn't realize it was just something you could do if you wanted to or not. I, I thought it was a mandate. <laughs> I use that very popular word today, right? I thought you had to do it. But I never minded to do it, doing it uh, not at all. But understand, they turn their ears away from the truth. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, there's a verse here uh, that I'll read. Uh, uh, it says in verse 11, 
Therefore, whether it it were I or they, so we preach and so you believe. So Scripture simply says we come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ uh, simply by hearing the preaching of the gospel, the good news, and believing it and accepting it. Uh, but, but we're going to get in a little deeper here in, in just a moment when when the Scripture uh, talks about something else here in the third chapter of Second Timothy verse. Uh, 13 it says, but evil men and seducers, evil men and and of course those that are imposters shall wax worse or get worse and worse or grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So we, we, we look in the scripture and we see the scripture tells us about the future. Now we are in the future. Okay? Uh, the songwriter says tomorrow never comes and I realize when we talk about tomorrow when it gets here today and in a sense it can never come. But we are in the future, okay? And there will be a future for this earth until the Lord says there won't be one anymore. So we know the evil men and imposters. But not only in society, not only in, in uh, the politics of America and, and in the world, but also in the religious realm. Okay? There are, there are those that are imposters, those that teach something other than what God's Word teaches. The brother was teaching in the Sunday school class this morning over in the recreational building. He talked about the fact that there's only one way to heaven. By the way, there's only one way to heaven. Amen. And that's through Jesus Christ. There's not Amen. many ways or two ways or some ways. There's only one way. And we know the Lord said He was that way, and I believe that. Now, when we think about ever learning and turning their ears away from the truth and, and how we are saved by the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ and believing and evil, man, evil men and imposters, we get to a word that I want to use this morning as a, uh, as a thought, and the word is vain. Ever thought about this word? When we go over here just a moment and begin to read in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, we'll find that it's used several times. Alright? The word vain. I oftentimes look up the word uh, in the Webster's Dictionary. I don't look up vain in the Bible Dictionary uh, because I don't know how we use it in our everyday life. And in our everyday life, it simply means without real value. Something that's vain is without real value. You, you know what Old Testament talks about? Beauty is vain. It, it ain't when you're young. It is when you're old. <laughs> hey, like that. It, it ain't when you're young, but it is when you're old. A beauty becomes vanity because you realize that it doesn't last. It's not of real value. Uh, the word vain means something that's empty. Something that's worthless. Something to no purpose, no no good end. So a lot of things are vain that we look at today in, in our society. They've always been that way. But when we go to First Corinthians chapter fifteen, we begin to read in the Word of God. We find that verse two uses the word vain, and this is the way that God is using the word. He says, "By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you." have believed in vain. Now, we struggle with that. I'll just be real honest with you. For a lot of years, a lot of things I didn't really understand. And, and, and when I would read this verse, I'd think, now how can you believe in vain? I, until I spent many years pastoring and I realized, without trying to be a judge, that I had seen this happen a lot of times. People believing in vain. Was the message vain? No. The message was about a, a Savior who loved us and died for us and rose again the third day, just like the Bible says, and ascended back to glory, and He's there waiting for us to call upon Him and receive Him as our Savior. That's not a vain message. It's not vain because it's the truth. Amen. So how could a person believe in vain? Well, simply believe uh, uh, without effect. In other words, believing only with our mind. The Bible says that it's got to start with our heart. 
It's, it's not an intellectual thing. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's not a wisdom as the world would think about wisdom. It's got to be done with the innermost part of every individual being. We have really got to believe that. Then it will have an effect on us. Now let me explain. When I would see people get saved, and they'd get, they would get saved, and they would come into the church, and they would uh, join the church, we would baptize them, and, and, it, and it might seem like everything was going pretty good for several months. Sometimes not even months. Then all of a sudden, they were out of church and gone. And I'd wonder about them, worry about them. Oftentimes, I uh, would check on them, and, and it would always be something, some kind of excuse. But you know what? What had happened was they had believed in vain. They had believed to, to a point, but not the point of real saving grace. And, and they had the, the, the saving grace of Jesus Christ had no effect on their life. None. It didn't change their speech. It didn't change their thinking because they had believed with their mind and their intellect only and hadn't believed with their heart. The Bible says, but with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, could a person go through all the motions and all be saved? Sure. Now, it doesn't take away the fact when he, when he saves us and we really believe and trust Him and, and as a change and we're really are washed in the blood, that doesn't take away anything from that. Because it's not about the message, it's not about the method, it's about the person believing. What, what did he say in verse 1? Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you that the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you received, and wherein you stand. Amen. By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Or believed to, to a, a point of where there's no effect in your life, okay? Uh, the thought of of believing in vain. No, no there's no change. The, the really did not believe. Just a head believe. One example that we can find of this is found a lot of times around vacation Bible school. Okay? A lot of times we find it. Now, now I know it, it works the other way sometimes too. Don't take me wrong. I'm not saying this is not right. Uh, or, and, and I find it sometimes happening around someone's passing. Okay? I've seen people after uh, 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 someone passes on, uh, they come and, and, and get right or, or go through the motions. And then that's about it. It's about it. Or they come to vacation Bible school as a little child. And because the other children are going down to the altar, they go. But you know, God's a gracious God. If we make a mistake like that, you know what? He will reveal to us and sooner or later down the road we'll realize that we didn't uh, know Christ as our Savior. We basically believed in vain because we were good it, because it was the right thing to do or a fad. You know how people ought to get saved? The Bible says they ought to be sorry for their sins. It's called a contrite spirit. The Bible says, the Word of God says, they ought to be sorry for their sins. And, and of course, being afraid of hell is okay. <laughs> okay? That's not a bad thing. But listen, it's not just a, 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 a fire protection plan. It's salvation. We want to be saved and be part of the family of God. So uh, here we see people believing in vain or believing without any effect taking place in their life. Verse 10 goes on and says this, But by the grace of God I am what I am, and His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Now here he uses the same, same chapter, same Word of God, same book of the Bible, and the word vain here is talking simply about uh, uh, he did not, and, and kind of in a, uh, uh, the opposite direction. Now he says, uh, but... That, but His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. In other words, He says, the grace that was bestowed upon me that God gave me and, and, and I work with was with success, not without success. 
He said, God's grace was bestowed to me had success. It wasn't without success. It wasn't vain. It had success because he said, uh, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So here we see right the opposite. He's talking about the fact that His grace uh, 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 is the thing that, that saved Him. For the Bible says, For by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, uh, uh, not of works, lest any man should boast. And works are part, part of our life as a Christian, but works will never save us. It's God's grace. So here we see the word vain used in the place of uh, being without success. But his preaching and his work was with success. So it wasn't vain. Verse 14 has a couple of times it's used here in verse 14. It says, And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain. Do you realize something? If Christ is not risen from the dead, why preach is vain? Without truth. So therefore, His resurrection being real means what I preach is not vain. But it is true. The, the Apostle Paul says here on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain. Uh, I just be real honest with you. I, I'm not a, if, if we can say of ourselves that we're religious people, I'm not a religious person just because it's the thing to do. Because in this society, it's not the thing to do. It's not popular. Matter of fact, in that last century we just came out of, it, it wasn't popular there either. Now there was a time, I remember uh, uh, some of, of the older elders here in the church many years ago talking about when they'd have revival, uh, everybody in the neighborhood would show up. People would sit in their cars and stand outside the windows and look in and listen and, and, and uh, people coming and getting saved because there wasn't any sock hops to go to. There wasn't any beer joints to go to. There wasn't a whole lot of things. So that, that's what they had to do in the community. And everybody went and did it. It was a thing to do, but not today. The devil has something for folks to do on every corner, every moment, every hour of the day. We don't live in a, in a society uh, which operates on five days or six days. It runs seven days a week, 24 hours a day. As we say it, 24-7. And, and Satan has always got something for us to do. I think about people how busy they are. We don't even have time to sit down on the front porch like they used to. Talking the other day about some of our uh, uh, grandchildren uh, uh, not having the ability to uh, converse because they spend so much time with technology and spend so much time uh, on the phone that they can't hold a conversation. And, 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 uh, and of course, it, it's a sad thing that it's happened that way. But the preaching of Jesus Christ is not vain. And then he goes on in verse 14 and he goes on and says this. Let me read the verse together. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain. And your faith is also vain. If, if Jesus Christ didn't rise from the dead, then, then the preaching of the resurrection is without truth, and your faith and mine is without any basis whatsoever. Paul goes on and says, matter of fact, he said in verse 19, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Do you know what you know what God says in his word? You know what he's really saying right here? He's saying if there's no resurrection, then this is no better than any other religion. <clears throat> you hear me? If there's not a resurrection, if a person cannot be saved, and when they pass on, uh, go to that place that God has provided for them, and of course, uh, 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 be raised in His likeness, then what's the use? Just to eat, drink, and be made? <laughs> or sing? Okay, whatever. There, there's, no, there's no real uh, purpose in it. But it's not that way. The resurrection is real. And, and us being the first fruits of them. So, listen, 
If Jesus is risen from the dead, then our, we're, our message is without truth. Uh, our, our faith is without basis. And then verse 17 says, If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain in your yet in your sins. In other words, what I just said a moment ago, what we are doing is useless. If, if the resurrection of... Somebody says the resurrection is important. Do you know that I have had people inside the church that do not believe there's a hell? Now, I understand. Somebody says, oh, well, preach you know. But did you realize that I have known people inside the church that didn't believe there was a heaven either? And I think of that when I read these verses. And I think, what's the use? It's useless. It's useless being a child of God. That's what, isn't that what Paul said here? If in this life only we have hope in Christ, if there's no resurrection, then this religion, this this. Uh, uh, God has given to us is no better than anything else, is it? No, it's not. But it is better. Why? Because we haven't believed in vain. We have believed with that hope that is a hope that we can hold on to. We're not in our sins. Because, listen, if He didn't rise again the third day as He said He would, not as men believe, and I hear some teaching, then understand, if He didn't rise like He said He would rise from the grave, then He sure can't forgive you of your sins. He cannot be a great high priest. He could not be one that can forgive us of our sins and cleanse us and save us if He's still in the grave. Pastor talked about that this morning. Uh, uh, you can go there. His tomb is empty. Why? Because He's not there. He's risen from the grave. So, we think about this word vain. If, if Jesus isn't risen from the dead, then our preaching is without truth. Our, our faith and, and our belief is without basis. It is useless. And, and we're in trouble, okay? Then in verse 58, same, same uh, chapter, verse, chapter 15, 1 Corinthians, it says in the last verses, Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast, unmovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Understand, know, know this, that your because of the resurrection, your labor is not uh, good for nothing. You, you, you ever heard somebody now, they probably don't use this phrase anymore because it's probably not politically correct, right? But I used to hear old folks when I was raised up, they would say about somebody, most of the time it's guys, okay, ladies, y'all probably present most of the time about this, but they'd say, he's good for nothing. <laughs> you ever heard that? that old saying, he's good for nothing. Uh, they may have said that about a few women, but I never heard that very much. But anyhow, the fact of the matter is, uh, here in the scripture, we find that our labor is good for something. It's not useless. It's not good for nothing. It is good for something. Why? Because of the resurrection. Now, now I say the message in all this. The message in all this is simply this. What we're reading and what we're hearing and seeing in the Word of God is not useless. It's not worthless. It's not without basis. It's, it's not without truth. It is truth. It has basis. It is the fact. And so therefore, everything that is said, our works, as I talk about, so Sister Queen uh, resting from her labors and going on to be with the Lord and and, and the fact of the matter is, there's nothing that that lady done or anyone else has ever done for the Lord Jesus Christ that is lost. And it's because of the resurrection. Everything we do is not vain in any way because it's not lost because of the resurrection. Amen. We can trust God and believe it's real and know that it's real, okay? Second Corinthians, a couple more verses I want to share with you before I close. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 1 reads, We then are workers together with Him. We then as workers together with Him. Beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. Now we're back to that point of somebody believing in vain. See that you do not allow it to happen that way, okay? without any action. When a person is saved, we ought to see the action of their salvation. It, it ought to have make a difference, if I just say it in a simple way, 
salvation or to make a great difference in our life. Not a small difference, but a great difference. The songwriter said, I went back to the house where I used to live. My little boy ran hid behind the door. I said, son, don't fear. you got a brand new daddy now, thanks to Calvary. Amen. Thanks to Calvary. Understand, we're changed by the grace of God. And when He saves us, there's an action that takes place. Our salvation is not without action. It's not vain. It has action. The Bible says not to receive uh, the grace of God in vain. But listen, be workers together. Workers together, as, as the Word of God says. And in the book of James, we find a very familiar passage of Scripture that talks about uh, something here. And, and we'll close with this in just a moment. If any man in, in James 1 and 26, if any man among you seem to be religious, okay? Now we use that word. There, there was an elder lady asked one time, uh, was, was her religion any good? She said, yeah, my religion is good because my religion is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Very smart woman, wasn't she? Very, very intelligent. If any man among you seem to be religious and vile knowledge tongue, but the sick of his own heart, this man's religion is vain. The Bible says if a person, they're, they're, listen, he changes our vocabulary. He changes the way we talk. I will assure you I don't talk like I used to. <laughs> My vocabulary is smaller than it used to be. You say, you forgot all them other words. No, I remember every one of them. But I don't use them, so they're not my vocabulary anymore. You understand? Used to, I thought, that made you sound big. And, and you know, I hear, uh, I used to think uh, little boys growing up, oftentimes the older boys would teach them to say something bad like that. You, got, you, know, you guys know I'm telling you the great things. And then laugh at you when you say it. And that little boy would think that was making him big because he was saying what the older boys told him to say. That made him feel macho or big. But in, but in a sense, it wasn't doing that at all. It was being made a mock of But the Bible says a man, and it's not only here, if a man uh, does not bridle his tongue, he's deceived his own heart. And the Bible says, God says, this man's religion, this man's religion, it's useless. It's vain. If I, I close, if if I talk like I used to many many years ago, I'm just going to say this. I hope I ain't overstepping the bounds. You probably wouldn't want me to be your preacher. Now, is that is that overstepping? I I'm going to tell you. I really hope. If I had talked like I used to talk, you wouldn't have me as a preacher. I'd think, but if you did, I wouldn't think much of it. Okay? If, if, if a person doesn't change, not just their vocabulary, but all our life changes when we come to Christ because of the resurrection, because of the power. But the Bible says that we deceive our own heart. The real bad thing is this. When a person goes through all the motions, and they believe in vain. In other words, there's no change takes place. There's nothing, nothing really happens. They continue on with their old lifestyle. And, and I know for some folks it doesn't just happen overnight. I realize that. It just doesn't happen. But for some folks it does. For, for me it did. And I was glad because I, I never was a good student. God knew I wasn't a good student, so He just had to change me and me. Okay? Or I had to fail the test. But my life, the, the way I live every day, the way you live, who you are, how you love others, how you care for others, how you interact with others, how you treat your family, how you love your family, uh, how you're on the job. Uh, you, you, may, you may hate your job, but you work like you love it. Oh, it's really quiet now. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, it should change our lives in, in every aspect of it. It should change our lives. But if we believed in vain, if we've just gone through the motions, then what happens? We come down to the end of the road and we end up like in verse 26 here, and it says that he that deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. 
When we believe only with our mind, with our intellect, with our smarts, then the problem with that is we never allow God to do the work of trying to do it ourselves. I do my part, but my part's very small. How about you? If you do your part, if you try to do the best you can, then it comes down to that place where the rest of us got to be God. It, Sure. Have I stayed healthy all my life? You want my plan? No, I don't want it. Because I do what I can most of the time. <laughs> most of the time. I'm putting disclaimer in here on this, all right? <laughs> most of the time. But then God takes care of the rest, if not all. So it really comes down to I don't believe in vain. I don't trust in vain. I believe in holy. Totally, 100%. I do my part, and I know he'll do his. If there's ever a letdown on um, one of the other near him, if there's ever, ever a letdown on um, doing our part, I'll assure you, it's on my part, on his. He always does his part. He always takes care of me. He always gives me the courage that I need, the strength that I need. He always helps me while my shortcomings. And by the way, as they're coming, you get ready to sing. We all have our weaknesses. Okay? That doesn't mean we're unsaved. When we fall, that doesn't mean we're unsaved. I'm talking about believing in vain. In other words, believing with our intellect. I believe with my heart. When I see, when I went to the altar, I'm gonna be real honest with you. Many, many, many years ago. I didn't go to the altar with a dry eye. Now I'm not saying somebody that doesn't cry and say. But I'm going to tell you, when you're bad, you've got something to be broken hearted about. Don't you? Okay? I'll be like Paul. Probably everybody here is better than me. But the fact of the matter is, I, I have seen folks come to all day, come to all day smiling. They leave smiling. And I guess they're still smiling because they ain't never seen it again. <laughs> you understand? Really honestly, I never seen it again. Why? Because they must have believed with their mind, their intellect, and not with their heart. Because your heart has a tendency to bring you back to what you love, to what you know is good, and what you know is right. And so therefore you return. You return back home, ever how you would like to put it. But I hope there's no one here this morning that has believed in vain. You've gone to that certain point, but then you stop showing wholeheartedly turning it all to the Lord. And you struggle with it because you wonder how why things happen in the way they are. You see somebody and say, I wonder how they can, can be uh, live a Christian life like they do. It's not because of them. It's because they've turned it over to the Lord. And the Lord's heaven. Okay? That's all we need to do. But I hope you're saved. I hope everyone here this morning is saved. If you'll stand in your feet, we'll sing a verse of song. And give y'all the to come and pray. Make number 57. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. If perhaps for any reason you need to come, heal and all to talk to the Lord this morning. Now's the time. If God is speaking to you all, now's the time. Not being ashamed. Bow before God, bow before man, to humble our hearts, to show it by humbling our bodies before God. As he sings the last verse of the message, there's still time to take a break for life. For any reason,
dad was able to uh, carry mom. Uh, she had a drink where she was the stuff, of course, to the side, and they're carrying to the doctor. Uh, so she was lucid and almost back to normal for very weak. They do appreciate your prayers, but they continue to continue to pray for her. Uh, hopefully we'll find out something soon. But they left just a few minutes ago, so we'll, we will know something for a little bit. But thank you for your prayers. Uh, all right, thank you. Appreciate that. Speaking you prior. Uh, any announcement maybe we hadn't mentioned? We need to take care of before we close. All right, have a have a great weekend. Remember Wednesday nights, uh, kids club and also uh, our Bible study here in all the as we come together as a, as an adult group. So if you're grown <laughs> and you want to come for Wednesday night service, there's a place for you too. And that doesn't exempt you, by the way. If you want to go next door and eat pizza at 6.30 or whatever we have with the children, you're welcome to do that also, okay? So uh, keep that in mind. Come be with us on Wednesday night. And keep praying. Someone has mentioned about some of the churches. Uh, I know one of the churches where I used to pastor of Avenue, they, as soon as things kind of calmed down, they just went back to full-blown uh, service. and you know, Wasn't careful at all about it. Now they're basically shut down again. They're meeting in the parking lot. Having to go through the same thing that they once did. And I realize we're probably closer to six foot. But I'm hoping that everybody's still doing their part, trying to be safe. And I believe if we do our part, I know God will do His part. Okay? That almost preach, huh? If we'll do our part, God will do His part. So let's just trust in Him. I think we're still... Uh, been able to come. That ain't saying that no one in, that belongs to Waterloo Baptist Church has not got COVID. We know that has happened. But so far, everybody's been really nice. As far as I know, I had a brother to church. <laughs> <coughs> and I, I still believe if you're sick, stay at the house. <laughs> okay? That, that's the way that goes. But that, that ought to go for anything, okay? Not just COVID, the flu or, or whatever, all right? Wow. It's not just. Uh, this day and time is for everything. So, and pray for our children there, our school system. I know it's really, really seems to be uh, taking a real toll on on the teachers and faculty, and of course, uh, most of all, on the, on the children. So let's pray for them. Uh, and, uh, and of course, don't forget to pray for those that have, that are really being reminded uh, about 9/11. As far as I know, I lost no kinfolk or close acquaintances during that time. Maybe some of you did. I don't know. Uh, but uh, there are people that did. So that's, that's why our hearts and prayers go out to them uh, in this special time of need. Brother Aiken, would you dismiss us in prayer? Lord, I thank you for this. Lord, I thank you for the very thing that I leave with you. Lord, I Lord, I pray that we can be here. If there's any problem you have, you know that it finds what it is. Lord, again, I think this church, Lord, again, the churches that are closed here in God, Lord, I pray that you would keep us going. Lord, keep us safe. Lord, I know I put my trust in you. If any virus, Lord, see you. Lord, I love you and I give all the honor and praise to you.